A lot has happened this past decade, but I think it's safe to say that one of the most prominent occurrences that this new generation of kids was subjected to throughout these 10 years was not politics or climate change or the fact that we're growing up within a crumbling society, but memes. This new generation of kids, aka Gen Z, spent most of their childhood or teenage years growing up within the 2010s. As we grew and changed, memes changed with us. Memes are becoming more and more relevant, with even big corporations using the format in order to promote their own products. I mean, take the summer of 2016-2017, for example. There was that whole phase the official Wendy's Twitter went through where they would just roast the crap out of everyone. Meme format is so versatile, and the fact that it was able to reach beyond its usual niche and into the world of mega corporations is pretty impressive, if a bit unsettling. However, as with anything that gets a little too popular for its own good, you're bound to find some memes that are, mildly put, less than tasteful. While most people use the format as a way to get people to laugh and forget about their problems, if only for a few seconds, a lot of other people use this format to spread offensive or just downright hurtful messages. Despite this, people continue to laugh at and share these offensive memes, almost as if they're desensitized towards them. The thing about memes is they spread fast. With the technology we have paired with the many social media platforms at our disposal, the good, the bad, and the ugly of memes are able to move from one person's feed to the next with a tap of a thumb. I'll give you an example of what I mean. A couple months ago, it was a sad time for many of us who grew up watching Disney Channel, as Cameron Boyce passed away in July of 2019. Many people mourned and were extremely respectful about the whole ordeal, as you should be. However, others found this as a way to build something new, so to say. So as a couple, as soon as a couple of days after Cameron's death, people were churning out very, very offensive memes about him. And unfortunately, this isn't the only case of people using a widely known celebrity's death as a way to promote their meme pages. Juice World, an American rapper known for his songs such as Lucid Dreams or All Girls Are the Same, also lost his life in December of 2019 due to a drug-induced seizure. Like Cameron, many people were devastated at the loss of this young public figure. However, some people saw his death as the basis for yet another joke. Videos of people faking seizures with his music playing in the background. Images of people lying on the floor with foam coming out of their mouths and the words, do the juice world over top of it. And these are only a few mild examples of the jokes people were making. Now, don't get me wrong, the message of this talk is not to say memes are bad and we should ban them from the internet. It's more along the lines of we should be more mindful of what we laugh at and the memes we share. I mean, I run a meme page myself, so I know firsthand just how horrible the meme community can be. Well, technically, I inherited the meme page, as silly as that sounds. And not to throw anyone under the bus, but with the previous moderator, there are memes being posted that weren't, simply put, very politically correct. So as soon as the meme page legacy fell into my hands, I decided to stop posting these offensive memes and instead post memes that would just garner a feel-good laugh. However, I began to see a small but noticeable amount of people commenting things like, what happened to the old memes? Or this page just isn't as funny anymore. First of all, ouch, my feelings. But more importantly, why did people prefer these offensive memes over a good innocent laugh? Before I answer this, I wanna backtrack a little. I think it's crucial that we first define what offensive really means in order to understand the full impact these memes have. According to google.com, offensive means causing someone to feel resentful, upset, or annoyed. Though I don't think I really needed to define that as the word offensive is being thrown around these days with little regard. Depending on where you grew up, the people you hang out with, the experiences you have, your personal definition of offensive is going to be a little different than those around you. For me, as someone who's half black, I find the use of the n-word by someone who isn't black extremely offensive. But surprisingly, many people, more than I'm comfortable with, don't seem to find that as unfavorable as you'd expect them to. And that makes me think, what? Why do they think that's okay? Why don't they think that's as wrong as I do? 
but the answer is pretty simple. They don't have the background, the context for it to be offensive to them. Not saying it's okay, just that they can never comprehend the significance of it because they aren't black. Similar to how people who have not had someone close or important to them die might not find the Cameron Boyce or Juice World memes as offensive as someone who has, or how those of us not affected by coronavirus might jokingly cough in someone's face just to garner a quick laugh. So now that we've somewhat defined what offensive really means, we can go back to the main focus, the main question. Are memes really desensitizing us? Well, the obvious short answer is yes. Think of it this way. Memes are like a virus, no pun intended. We constantly are subjected to them, and similar to a flu shot, we begin to gain immunity. This immunity allows us to overlook the small things and laugh off the not so small things. There have been multiple experiments as to why humans tend to find humor in dark situations and the effect of this, but the answers are a bit wishy-washy. On one hand, seeking out these offensive jokes can lead to negative consequences. In one study, researchers found that men who were exposed to sexist jokes had their perception of the seriousness of rape decreased, meaning they didn't find rape to be that big of a problem. On the other hand, using offensive humor has also proven to break down social barriers, as many disabled comedians and comedians of color have used their stereotypes and reversed them in order to undermine racism or ableism. But there's the big difference. When offensive is shown to be positive, it's the people who are being persecuted who are making the jokes. When offensive is negative, it's told by those who have not experienced whatever it is they're talking about and are only using it to get a quick laugh. This brings me back to what I said before. Those who find offensive jokes funny just don't have the context for it to be offensive to them. They can never understand the significance of it. So yes, memes are desensitizing us, but maybe not in all the wrong ways. However, as the definition of offensive is relative, I can't truly support that statement. My only hope is that when you see something that you just don't find right or read something that makes you uncomfortable, you do something about it. And doing something about it could literally mean doing nothing at all. Don't like it, don't share it. That's one less door the meme can go through. Even saying something as simple as, I don't find that funny, could deter others from showing you memes like that again. It's hard, trust me, I know. But to have a positive experience on the internet, you have to make sure that you weed out all the other stuff that's gonna put a damper in your day. With this, the consumption of memes can be a little more enjoyable for everyone involved. Thank you.